your majesty. As children of the kingdom of God, we welcome you in the name of the King of Kings. That moment right at the start of the coronation service did it for me. I was sold from that point on. That amazing 14-year-old chorister who uh, said that so confidently to King Charles. And then, of course, King Charles' response, which was amazing, in his name and after his example, I come not to be served, but to serve. And that was Samuel Strawn, who was the um, child that spoke to Charles. And it just set the tone for the whole service. And it just was perfect. It was just such a perfect opening. Now, I'm going to get on to your impressions of it because I think that's the most important thing. I've looked through all the comments and I've read every single one and they're just brilliant. And I want to share them with you because I think that's the most important thing of a moment in history. If we can hear from all the voices out there that watched it and appreciated it and their impressions of it, then that's like a little time capsule that we can put away and like I said in the community post, in a hundred years, people might watch back the video to find out what, you know, people thought of the coronation service of King Charles III. So we're, we're making history here, guys. We're making history. Um, but I did want to share a few little impressions that I had. Um, I'll share them as I read out the comments, the more, you know, poignant parts of the service. But I wanted to share a few little Harry tidbits because if there's if that's the only thing that people are interested in, they can watch this bit and then they can go <laughs> and then we can read the comments for those that want to talk more about the actual coronation service. But I did notice a few. Oh, I can hear a kookaburra in the background. Sorry about that. Um, I did notice a few little things that I haven't heard other YouTubers mention about Harry. And I think the reason why they haven't mentioned it is because I think I did get a different viewpoint. I actually paid to stream the coronation through BritBox and that's not an ad. I paid for it. They don't even know who I am. But I'm so glad I did. And the reason why I did that was I looked back at a few of their royal specials where they had this really cinematic viewpoint of like the Platinum Jubilee and other, you know, big major royal events. And I thought, well, they capture that footage while the event's going on. So I imagined that I would get a really good bird's eye view if I looked at it through their service. And I was flicking around through other channels in Australia, sort of comparing what I was seeing to what was being made available on just the local networks. I got a really good view of the whole thing. There were some people complaining that they didn't really see enough of Camilla or they didn't really see enough of Catherine or William or they didn't see enough of Harry. Or, But I, I feel like I did. And, and I got this most beautiful cinematic view of the orchestra and the choristers and the royal harpist. And um, I'm sure that the BBC probably did a brilliant job as well but I didn't have access to that here in Australia. Um, so I'm really glad I did. And I noticed a few things about Harry that uh, uh, people haven't mentioned. I noticed that the newspapers mentioned that he walked into the Abbey on his own. And he did because there was Beatrice and Eugenie and uh, Jack and Edo, but they were sort of a couple either side of him and he was in the middle and he was walking into the Abbey. And one thing I found interesting from the BritBox sort of camera view was that they didn't show, uh, you know, the, the York girls. They showed pretty much just Harry. So he looked a very lone figure walking into the Abbey. And he was doing this sort of awkward sort of, hey, how you going type faces to a few people that were seated as he entered that first part of the Abbey. And then the camera went to the people sitting in those front rows. There wasn't a smile amongst them. I am not kidding. Frosty faces. Now, there was one uh, man who was dressed in religious sort of robes that gave him a sympathetic smile, one. But other than that, it was avoidance, no eye contact, and rather frosty. 
The other thing I noticed about Harry was when he went in and took his seat and he was chatting to Jack, all of a sudden he looked at someone sort of off camera. This was after they were seated. And he looked at someone off camera, just off to his left. And I couldn't see who it was, but all of a sudden all the tension drained away from his face and he looked quite animated and he was sharing pleasantries, but even a bit more than that, a bit of warmth and smiles with someone. And I thought, oh, who's this? Who is he? You know, because just all the tension went out of his face and he looked like the old Harry. So I was waiting for whoever it was to come into shot and it was Princess Anne. Now, this was prior to her sitting down. She entered the aisle where she was due to sit, but she didn't sit down. She thought twice about it because other people were trying to get into the row and she exited again back out into the main aisle and then at a later point came and sat down. So this was before she took her seat. And so Harry, like I said, was looking and saying a few animated sort of things to someone just slightly off camera. Then Princess Anne came into shot, but with her back to the camera and she was looking right at Harry. So, and his eyes didn't change from the animated relaxed face to her entering the shot. So I'm pretty confident that it was her. And then she stood sort of in front of him, but with her back to the camera and said a few more words, not many, and then turned around. And then, as I said, went back out into the aisle. And I just was quite amazed. And I, and I thought my impression was that she would probably was saying something like Prince Philip would have said, you know, sort of that ironic sort of you know, bitey sort of but friendly humour, like, oh, you managed to make it, did you? Or something like that. That All the tension went out of his face. And then when she went back into the aisle, he sort of went back to sulky boy Harry. And, you know, and at that point he was probably thinking, I look too happy. I'll get into so much trouble when I go home. I was told not to look happy in the happy so he went back to sulky boy Harry at that point. But I found that interesting. And if I've got it right there, um, good old Anne, you know, she she never misses a beach. I, I seem to think that if Harry had been brought up by Anne or spent a lot more time at her house, I think everything would have worked out a bit differently. So I'm going to go into your comments, but I wanted to tell you, obviously, I told you about the opening moment, which really moved me. But the music, ah, oh, the music, it was superb. And there was a few hymns from my school days too that I remember. <laughs> and also I loved the second hallelujah, the, the gospel. First time that a gospel group had actually sung at a coronation. I thought it was stunning. And I loved after the gospel little group sang, uh, the camera went to Catherine and Charlotte and they shared a real appreciation of great music moment together. And Catherine was just beaming, beaming after the gospel piece. And I also noticed that Catherine was also beaming across the way a bit. And I don't think it was to King Charles. I don't think she could directly see him because he was further up. But I think that she was actually sending a lot of loving smiles to George. Didn't he do a good job? Hardly anyone's mentioned George, but I thought he did a great job. He just quietly and smoothly went about his business with the other page boys. He was often at the back with Major Johnny. Oh, he looked quite nice, didn't he? <laughs> he looked wonderful. I was so glad that he paid a major part in the ceremony when he helped uh, King Charles III put on his beautiful gold robes after the anointing. I'm sure there was many women swooning <laughs> point all around the world um, but yeah that was a nice touch and yes and I thought Camilla looked rather nervous but she also looked quite lovely at times I thought her outfit just hit the right spot I loved Sophie and Catherine the fact that as two senior working royals they almost had a uniform on and I thought it was stunning but 
I just love Catherine so much and think she's so pretty that I wanted to just sort of say, oh, take off the robe so we can see your dress. And I thought the feather for Princess Anne in front of Harry, I, I agree, that was the candle moment of the, of the event. It was hilarious. Now, whether that was deliberate or not, I mean, probably they couldn't risk a candle. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was funny. An Australian commentator said, oh, the whole cast of Harry Potter's there, not realising that it, they weren't there because they were in the cast of Harry Potter. They were in there because they were Shakespearean actors. And actually, didn't you think that the opening of the coronation had quite a Shakespearean feel to it? I thought it did, it just when the, you know, that opening line... Uh, it was very Shakespearean. I thought, oh, we're in for a great, great time here. This is going to tell quite the story. And it did. Anyway, these are your comments and thank you so much. I woke up to these this morning and um, I just really enjoyed reading them and it reminded me of parts of the ceremony that I might have forgotten about. So they're wonderful. Okay, so here we go. Rensky said, the coronation was such a meaningful ceremony to me. No other institution, to my knowledge, has the ability to bring so many people and countries together at the same time. The church itself was majestic and heavenly. The choir took me to another spiritual realm. I was moved beyond comprehension. The inclusion of all faiths at some significant points really highlighted the king's openness and reflected his love of all people in the UK and Commonwealth nations. Women, William, sorry, and Catherine looked gorgeous and their children behaved impeccably for their age. This was better than any movie or series I've ever watched. Netflix, eat your heart out. <laughs> True, true, yes. It was sort of the show of all shows, wasn't it? I think someone may have been sobbing on a floor somewhere or maybe fell into another security guard's arms. <laughs> People need to stop listening to the noise on social media because today we saw the power of soft diplomacy, honour and duty. Great point. I think Her Majesty the Queen would have been proud. I think so too, Rensky. That was a wonderful summary. Thank you so much for taking the time to write that. Shelley's Cloud said, William's Pledge. Yeah, that was so moving, it wasn't it, wasn't it? The the look in his father's eyes and the kiss on the cheek, and when he said thank you, William. Ah, oh, it was lovely. The king taking the salute from the armed forces, same. It's so spectacular. Just seeing all those armed forces on the field, that was spectacular in itself. It was amazing. A few moments just before he went in from the balcony, yeah, he sort of looked back at his people and he, he was so obviously moved. All three moments because I felt so very much how deeply His Majesty's soul was touched. Yeah. Yes, yes, I agree. That look back after the, the balcony moments, both balcony moments, that look back to his people. If it, to me, it looked like he just wanted to stay there and soak it up with them, not because it was about him, but he just wanted to be with them. Dottie Parker said, my eyes actually welled up when that man did his solo. It was so moving. Notice that has been didn't even open his mouth during God Save the Queen. Yes, Dottie Parker. Thank you so much for reminding me. And you know what else? He didn't sing God Save the Queen, or if he did, apologies, Harry, but your mouth barely moved. We couldn't see it. So he didn't sing it. And the other thing that really annoyed me, I felt like leaping into the television and slapping him across the face. I don't slap people across the face. It was just an emotion. But he kept looking the wrong way in the abbey. So if the action was this way to his right, because that was where the king went for his anointing and when he was up on the, you know, where all the action was happening. Now, fair enough, he mightn't have been able to overly see, right? But the action was more this way, this way. And often... He was looking that way. 
down the other way of the abbey where the entrance was. And it just looked rude and disinterested. It really annoyed me. Starburst Copy said, I love the way Charles visibly relaxed and smiled to the crowds when he made a second appearance on the balcony. I got goosebumps when the troops lined up in the gardens to salute the king. Yeah, yeah, it was a goosebumpy moment. And Princess Anne in the red coat stole the procession for me. She is a great spare. <laughs> yes, I agree. She's just marvellous. She's just marvellous. I just love Anne. Julie said, the whole thing was just beautiful and emotional to watch. I thought they all did amazing. I have to say that one of my favourite moments was on the balcony when it was all over. It looked like King Charles was amazed at the fabulous reception he was receiving and was reluctant to go back in. He must have been so relieved that it was finally done. Yes. Good point, Julie. Imagine the relief. I mean, all of them. Actually, I thought that um, William, it was a beautiful moving moment between him and his father, but I thought William just looked <laughs> done in, exhausted. Now, I don't know whether that was just genuine emotion of the poignancy of the very important moment. It could have been that. But I also saw in him like, oh, oh. I mean, it would have been such a relief that everything went okay. She bends, not breaks, said, when the choir sang, I was glad. Yes, yes. Hits me right in the feels every time. I wondered if it brought back lovely memories for the P, P and P's OW. Oh, as Catherine walked up the aisle, Prince and Princess of Wales, sorry. As Catherine walked up the aisle to that beautiful song on their wedding day. Right. I also loved when the Prince of Wales helped his father with his robes. Oh, and Princess Anne's red feather doing the work of the Lord. <laughs> As there weren't any large candles available. Oh, I love that she bends not breaks. The red feather doing the work of the Lord. That's just brilliant. Uh, Zadok the priest, yes. I think it's pronounced Zadok. Prince William's homage and the hip hip arrays from the military on the balcony palace lawn. Chills. Yeah, that was amazing. Jersey's Nana said, I was truly moved by Prince William's oath to his father. The love and gratitude that King Charles gave him brought tears to my eyes. The whales were stunning. Yes, they were. They didn't put a foot wrong. Perfect, perfect note. They hit the perfect note, didn't they? And Gabby Mayer mentions uh, Bryn Turfel. Oh, gosh, that was just superb, just superb. And his beautiful notes at the end, those beautiful, soft, perfect notes at the end, they just seared into the, your soul, didn't they? And she says, and the Prince of Wales swearing loyalty to his father, the king, and the choir singing Zadok the priest. Yeah. Yes, yes. C.A. girl said, after the ceremony, when all the people moved towards the balcony, and on the Brit Box uh, review of it, they had this wonderful reporter in amongst the crowd, and she was chatting to the crowd as they were excitedly making their way up to outside the balcony. And she talked to so many exciting people from all over the world and, you know, people from Norway and uh, people from Australia and people that had camped out, you know, for this amazing moment. And they didn't let the rain dampen their spirits. They didn't let anything dampen their spirits. It was just amazing. It was, it was just such a, a great feeling, wasn't it? They need us like we need them in this turbulent time. Oh, thank you, Jude Ally. She says more wonderful things, but she prompted a thought. In the crowd, someone was interviewed and she said, well, she said she had a real uh, British accent. She said, well, it's lovely. She said, they respect us and we respect them. So it's lovely, really. <laughs> I just thought that summed it up. 
So I'd just like to thank you all. There was over 150 comments and that would probably do for this video. I think we've got a taste of how you were all feeling, but I encourage you to go to that community post and read through all of them because they'll remind you of parts of the ceremony that you might have missed, some, some really poignant moments and beautiful moments and some funny moments about Harry. And thank you so much for sharing it with me, your thoughts, because it just made it for me. Having a community to chat about it with uh, just makes everything so much better. I just love, love the people on this channel. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.